good afternoon, buenas tardes. It's really my honor to be with you all this afternoon uh, and to talk a little bit about civic engagement. Um, as Carlos said, each one of us has a story and it is important to share those stories. Um, you know, uh, thank you Gloria for the amazing introduction. Um, it, it tells where my life has gone over the last 10 years, uh, but it doesn't tell you the full story. So I'd like to share that full story with you and uh, to really talk about the lessons I've learned along the way about civic engagement. So as was stated, I was born and raised in Commerce City, Colorado. Don't know if that me, Commerce City, hint that? And um, I went through all the local public schools in the Adams 14 school district. And I was very fortunate. I received an amazing scholarship, the Daniels Fund Scholarship, and took that scholarship. <laughs> and I took that scholarship to Georgetown University in Washington, D.C. Georgetown is a Jesuit school, a Catholic school. And I always knew, growing up Catholic, that the mission of the Catholic Church was to serve the poor and the disempowered. But it's something that I lost along the way sometimes. In between, you know, trying to concentrate on my confirmation and everything else, somehow that message was lost. And the Jesuits at Georgetown reinstilled it. The Jesuits are committed to social justice. That is what they instill in all of their students. And they emphasize the importance that we are men and women for others. That what matters most in life is not like how much money you make, what kind of job you have, or how successful you are, or what title you have. What's most important is how you serve your community, how you give back to all the people that have given so much to you. So I didn't have the typical profile of a student that goes to Georgetown. I went on scholarships, that's how I paid my way, and I also had part-time jobs all throughout college to try to afford the tuition. When I was there, um, it's much more expensive now, but when I was at Georgetown, it was about $42,000 a year in tuition, and most of that was covered by scholarships for me. So I worked, but then I also found time for social justice, for community service. So in addition to studying and working, I packaged meals for people with terminal illnesses in the D.C. area. I tutor kids in elementary schools in D.C. after school. And I staffed overnight shifts at a women's shelter. That taught me so much more than I ever learned in the classroom at Georgetown. So I worked my way, I worked hard, studied hard, and earned a bachelor's degree in American government. But I had horrible time. I graduated in 2008 from college, the height of the recession, and no one was looking to hire a recent college graduate with no work experience. So I did what every college graduate did those days, I moved back into my parents' basement, <laughs> much to their dismay, um, and I was looking for work. And that's when I got a Facebook message from a friend I went to high school with. And she said, did you know there are seats up on the city council? I think you should run. And of course, my immediate thought was, who in the hell is going to vote for a 24-year-old who lives in his parents' basement? <laughs> Not going to happen. So I responded and said, thank you so much for thinking of me. No chance. Um, uh, but, you know, appreciate the thought. Well, somehow in the next couple weeks, I ended up at a city council meeting. And I saw the issues that they were discussing. And I saw the representation on the city council. And at the time, there was not a single Latino representative on the city council. And so I ended up deciding to run. I had no idea how to run a political campaign. 
I designed my own flyer in Microsoft Word. I made copies of Kinkos in black and white because I couldn't afford color. And that's what I handed out to people. And when I announced for that seat, I was up against the chair of the planning commission and the vice chair of the board of adjustment. Two people with years of experience in city government. No one believed I had a chance, myself included. And I was so bad at this, that I actually ordered a book from Amazon called How to Win a Local Election. <laughs> So this is going to tell me everything I need to know. So I started knocking on doors and talking to my neighbors. I never even asked for anyone's vote, because I didn't know you were supposed to do that. <laughs> and um, that book taught me you're supposed to know how many votes it takes to win. Look at prior year's election results, see how many votes it took that person to win, and that's what you need to shoot for. Well, election day came around, and I counted up the number of people who willingly said, I like what you had to say, and I'm going to vote for you. And it was nowhere near that win number. So I said, well, oh well, looks like I lost. So I ended up um, at an election night party at Al Hardin, a local Mexican restaurant. Someone else's election night party, because I couldn't afford my own. <laughs> and um, it was just after the polls had closed, and I got a call from a reporter. And he said, have you seen the results yet, and how do you feel? And I said, I haven't seen them yet, but I gave it my best shot. And he said, well, you did, because you won. <laughs> You got more votes than the other two people combined. <laughs> you think you're the youngest person ever elected and conversate the street. There's only one thing that you can think when you live in your parents' basement and you've just been elected to city council. It was crap, what do I do now? <laughs> um, I loved every minute of serving on a city council. And I hope some of you in this audience will consider running for your city council one day, or your school board one day. Because that is the level of government where people believe it still works. That if you call someone and you bring up a problem, it's going to get solved. I loved it. I loved every minute of it. But I know that I went to school to discuss big issues too. Issues like healthcare, civil rights, Education. Those are the issues debated just across the lawn at the state capitol. So I ran for an open seat in the House in 2012 and was elected. And my first bill that I ever passed was a law called Breakfast After the Bell. It requires all of Colorado's low-income schools to serve universal breakfast to all kids in the morning. Because of that law, Because of that law, 80,000 more kids in Colorado have breakfast today than before. Yeah. Very exciting stuff. This is the kind of impact that you can have if you just pull up a chair, if you take a chance and you decide to run for office. You don't even need to run for office. Just be engaged. Email your elected representatives. Call them. Because I can tell you that if you are not doing that, you are letting them off the hook. You are letting them do whatever they want and not respond to the issues in your community. It is so important for you all to be involved, to hold your elected officials accountable, to run for office one day. Because I know that our community has so much more power than we're flexing right now. None of this would happen, have happened. This current anti-immigrant sentiment in our country would have never been the case if we would have shown up, if we would have held our elected officials accountable, if we would have voted, if we would have got other people to vote. So please, if there's, any, if there's one thing you take away from this, realize the impact that you can have and hold your elected officials accountable. Show up.
Thank you.